ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Andrew 26101 show. I want to thank everyone who's live right now. First of all, those of you who are new to my channel, go ahead and get those thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, pass my video around, all that other good stuff. But listen, I want to talk about Dr. Mike, man. Now listen, I've said this before in my last videos, man, that I do not entirely believe in this coronavirus, man. That's just me. I, I, I really don't believe at is it is as severe as the media proclaims it to be, you know, you guys know already that I'm anti-media, those of you who are new to my show, you know that I make a lot of comical jokes, I do a lot of stories, I talk about everything, you know, but listen, um, regarding to this coronavirus, is it real, yes, it's real, but Dr. Mike explains it all, those of y'all want to check out Dr. Mike's other videos and his other content, hopefully he doesn't flag this video or whatever because i am sharing his content around you guys go ahead and hit the subscription to dr mike man and check out his channel man i'm very inspired by this guy and especially about the you know the things that he has to offer regarding to uh useful information uh i've always said that don't judge don't judge the media or trust the media's judgment based on stuff that you know the doctors should be the ones giving you the answers for i've always said that and anyways guys go ahead and enjoy this beautiful commentary from dr mike go ahead and hit the subscription below maybe we'd be just better off if we gave it to everybody and then in a month it would be over oh my god there is so much misinformation going on with this novel coronavirus it boggles my mind and it's causing people to panic make bad decisions my patients are confused so i decided to make this video and take on misinformation by watching some clips reading some articles with you and really understanding where the misinformation comes from we have contained this i won't say airtight but pretty close to airtight We've done a good job in the United States. No, we did not contain it. No, it's not even remotely close to airtight. Yes, we've made some steps in the right direction of trying to quarantine people and we should applaud our public health professionals. But to say on national television that this is contained? No, especially February 25th, my God, the numbers are still gonna go up tremendously in the US as more testing kits become available. So no, not airtight, but also still no reason to panic. Are you taking this vote too seriously wearing a mask right now? Look, members of Congress are human petri dishes. We fly through the dirtiest airports, we touch everyone we meet. So if anyone's gonna get coronavirus, it's probably gonna be Congress. Uh, uh I'm at a loss for words here. He's wearing a gas mask. This isn't even what we wear in the medical setting when we're dealing with someone who has the coronavirus. This has to be for some kind of shock value, and clearly I'm watching it on TMZ, so he got the nation's attention. You're a lawmaker. You're the person we look to to give us accurate information to protect us. Take off the gas mask. Act like a human. Get educated on the subject. Stop with the misinformation. Think about how the world would be if you tried to quarantine everybody because of the generic type flu. Now, I'm not saying this is the generic type flu, but maybe we'd be just better off if we gave it to everybody and then in a month it would be over because the mortality rate of this probably isn't going to be any different if we did it that way. This is what happens when you have a politician or economist, I don't even know what his position is, speak on a subject that they're not experts in. This is horribly wrong. No, we shouldn't just gather everyone up and give them the novel coronavirus. That is a horrible idea and a horrible sentiment. Not only because it's cruel, because people are going to die, but it's not scientifically warranted. Let me explain. Yes, we don't quarantine everybody to prevent the spread of the flu, because we have things to prevent the flu, to treat the flu. We have medicines that if you get the flu, we can reduce complication rates, we can shorten the course. It's called oseltamivir. We also have the flu shot that if you get it, it prevents the spread of the flu, or if you still get the flu, you'll have a milder case. For the novel coronavirus, we have no such thing. So we absolutely need to slow this thing down by quarantining individuals so that we can get these medications made, approved, safety tested, do the same thing with the vaccine so that unnecessarily we don't cost people their lives. The whole purpose of herd immunity or community protection is to make sure everyone gets vaccinated vaccinated so we can protect those who can't get vaccinated. Now, in this case, we don't have a vaccine, but we can still provide herd immunity or community protection by quarantining those who are sick. Because 
yes, while me as a healthy 30 year old, if I get this novel coronavirus, it looks like my lethality rate is gonna be quite low. But for someone like my father, who's age 65, that's not the same story. What I don't like in life is that um, a very serious thing, a football manager's opinion is important. I don't understand that. I really don't understand. It, 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 it can, could ask you. You are exactly in the same role than I am. So, and it's not important what famous people, what famous people say. No, you have to. We have to speak about the things in the right manner. Why did it take a football manager to come on and make the most rational statement about this novel coronavirus? Oh my goodness! All it takes is if you don't know and you're not an expert allow the experts to speak on it. The last thing I wanna see is one more picture of Gwyneth Paltrow wearing a fancy $200 face mask, claiming that that's how she stays safe because she was in the movie Contagion and she knows what's up. No, that's goop. And when I say goop, I meant poop. I'm really disappointed in written media as well. It used to mean something to be a journalist where you really took on that oath to deliver the truth to the public so they can make the best decisions for themselves. And lately what I've been seeing, especially on digital media, is websites, and websites specifically that have a really good reputation, create click-worthy, buzzy articles that really are inciting panic and scaring people more than anything. Here I'm holding an article from Nat Geo, which was my favorite magazine growing up as a kid. The science in it really fueled my passion for learning about the human body. This article's called, Here's What Coronavirus Does to the Body. Already very clicky, okay, I'm with it. Let's see what it, the subheadline is. From blood storms to honeycomb lungs, here's an organ by organ look at how COVID-19 harms humans. Okay, okay, you're trying to grab attention. Okay, I'm with it. Let's see where we go from here. The disease can cast a storm over the whole human body. That sounds really scary. COVID-19 epidemic has killed more than 1,800 people, surpassing the SARS death toll in a matter of weeks. But then they explain that the death rate for COVID-19 appears to be a fifth of SARS. Scary sentence followed by a legitimate scientific quote that's not so scary. Last Thursday was nearly a 50% jump relative to the prior day, and the tally has since increased by another 13,000. Ooh, scary. Oh, but this leap reflects a change in the way Chinese authorities are diagnosing infections instead of a massive shift in the scope of the outbreak. If this outbreak continues to spread, there's no telling how harmful it could become. There's so many unknowns with this virus, but to theorize that everything could be the worst form of itself doesn't help anybody. It fuels fear, panic. It's the reason why toilet paper is off the shelves in so many countries, why hand sanitizers $80 for a little container on Amazon. This is why. And then they get to the meat of the article where they actually talk about each organ system and how it's affected. The lungs, ground zero. Even if death doesn't occur, some patients survive with permanent lung damage. SARS punched holes in the lungs, giving them a honeycomb-like appearance. And these lesions are present in those afflicted by novel coronavirus too. 82% of these cases are mild. As we learn more, for example, where there have been 150,000 or so cases tested in South Korea, they found the fatality rate is 0.6% there, not the 3.4% that the WHO talked about in China, which is to say that we need to learn more about it. But to talk about it as if it's creating honeycomb lungs or blood storms or affecting the stomach because SARS and MERS affected the stomach, why write this article? I don't know what purpose this serves outside of getting clicks and trying to get people scared. This is not useful, Nat Geo. You're not helping anyone with this. There's a reason why I keep saying alert, not anxious in my videos, and it's because we need people to not panic. We need them to be prepared. We need them to be ready for when the numbers go up because they most certainly will go up. In fact, here in the United States, the numbers are gonna skyrocket in the next few days. But that's simply because we're testing people, not because there's this new giant outbreak. There's also something to be said about the media's obsession with chasing numbers. 100,000 confirmed cases, 3,300 deaths, 230 known cases, 21 US states, 12 people have died. Yes, numbers are gonna go up. This is a virus that spreads. No matter how much we try and quarantine, there's still gonna be spread of this virus. The idea is that we try and control it to the best of our abilities, but know that there'll be 
be fluctuations in the daily numbers. That's why I recommend not looking every single day and not being scared by headlines that we see on Twitter that are like, oh my God, Governor Wolf says there are now two confirmed cases in Pennsylvania. There's gonna be a lot of confirmed cases in Pennsylvania and the US, especially as we get more testing kits available to the doctors and nurses on the front lines, but that's okay. We should know how many cases are out there. We want to know so we can properly calculate the lethality rate to get more information, to study these people, to maybe put them in clinical trials. But the more the media shows breaking news, alert, outbreak warning, the more we're gonna panic and the more we're gonna make bad decisions with bad information. And I urge the media, please be responsible in your reporting. Get a doctor on board. Get a researcher on board to talk about what's going on with this novel coronavirus. Because when we have unqualified individuals talk on this subject, it creates panic. Patients come in and take appointments from those who are truly sick because they want to get tested for a condition they shouldn't be tested for. So let's ease the misinformation out of our headlines. Let's talk about the facts and let trusted sources like the CDC and WHO guide us properly as we move forward throughout this pandemic. I put together a playlist of all my coronavirus videos right here, and I put together a playlist of my Reddit thread videos where doctors discuss some of their most difficult cases, embarrassing cases, and I think they're both worth a watch. Which one are you clicking on to stay happy and healthy?